So when we talk about how does malware execute and how does it persist on the system, there are three basic types. There's your droppers, your downloaders, and your injectors. Um, these are malware that when it executes, it will drop another um, binary onto the system um, where it is a um, basically a, the initial malware is just a packager and it will drop um, like a binary into your startup folder. That's the simplest method for, for those things, right? Uh, just drops into the startup folder and it gets, gets run um, like auto exec got bad back in the day. Way back in the day. Um, downloaders don't have any, uh, or rather only have the basic functionality of when it executes, it goes to a particular URL or connects to a particular port at a particular IP and gets a, um, another executable to execute and run. Uh, an injector will uh, inject its when it runs uh, instead of doing its main functionality as that process that initially runs, it'll actually inject its code into another process. And there are a few different methods of doing that. Um, but one that I've, I've seen is they'll start up, if Internet Explorer.exe isn't already running, um, they will start up an instance hidden in the background and actually inject uh, a DLL or um, open up the memory space right there, um, a blob of data to the memory space of iExplorer.exe, uh, and then create a new thread within Internet Explorer, and all able to do this from their own executable because Windows is awesome like that. Um, and I'm sure there are some legitimate uses, but this is just one of those things where you look at it like, really? Oh well. Um, but it starts a thread in I Explorer Z, and then when you see, um, hey, there's this machine that's going to, um, I don't know, cnn.com slash malware, and, uh, and you go, okay, what, what was doing that? Um, oh, it was I Explorer Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, Internet Explorer you know, would be reaching out to whatever. Uh, it's, it's just a way to make it look like the network traffic, like the activity is legitimate. Um, there's lots of uh, persistence mechanisms, as, as was, was mentioned. There was an attempted at talk at ShmooCon about it. Um, auto runs, auto runs is a great tool. Check it out. I'm not going to go into all of the stuff that, uh, that it could do, but just be aware there's um, places in the registry that can be edited. There's places on disk um, that you could put the files. Um, there's something called DLL load, load order hijacking, where if you put a DLL, um, uh, if, if you know what DLLs are going to be loaded by a particular process when it gets run, um, if you put a DLL with the same name as one of those that it's going to load, um, somewhere on disk where Windows will check first when the process gets loaded, such as in the same directory as the iExplorer.exe. If you, you know, iExplorer uses, I assume, WinInet.dll, if you put a file called WinInet.dll in the same directory as iExplorer.exe, it's going to see that before it sees the Windows System32 WinInet.dll, and it's going to load that. And that's one way that, that malware can, can get loaded and executed um, without having to change something in the registry or put itself in like a startup folder. Well, there are all, all of these different methods to be aware of, and you'll see stuff as you do um, more of your own malware analysis.